Hello friends, welcome to my YouTube channel and today we are here with another video and today's video is about uses of glucose in plants. So uh, as you all know that uh, plants are autotrophic organisms, they uh, make their own food because they have chlorophyll in chloroplast. Chlorophyll is basically a green pigment which is present in chloroplast. So they have these organelles uh, known as chloroplast with the help of which they absorb uh, sunlight and uh, uh, carbon dioxide and water mixed together and forms glucose. So as you can see here that plant uses sunlight carbon dioxide absorbed by means of stomata present on in leaf and water enters into the loop into the leaf through root stem uh, by means of sala and as a result uh, here photosynthesis occur food is prepared so um, and at the end of photosynthesis oxygen is released which is used by us uh, for respiration and plants also uses it for respiration plants also respire and glucose produced uh, is utilized by plant in so many ways so today's topic or in today's video is mostly about uses of this glucose in plants what is this glucose used for So uh, the first use of glucose is that glucose is used immediately by plant cells because glucose is used as a substrate and it oxidized and provides plants uh, energy for cellular activities. So and glucose is also used for the formation of cellulose cell walls. So you know that plant cells contain cell wall and cell wall is made up of cellulose and cellulose is also a carbohydrate like glucose. So glucose helps in the formation of cellulose cell walls and also in respiration it is used as a substrate. Now respiration is basically a process in which all the living organisms what happens they uh, their food is oxidized like glucose is oxidized and it in return gives them energy and uh, uh, energy is used for their growth and uh, repair of cells right so glucose is a substrate in respiration oxygen um, in plants taken oxygen by means of stomata present in the leaf and uh, this glucose gets oxidized and it gives out carbon dioxide water and gives energy carbon dioxide is some of the carbon dioxide is used in photosynthesis as a, a reactant and um, some carbon dioxide is released into the uh, into the atmosphere like at night time no photosynthesis occurs so it's basically only respiration so plants take in oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide and that's why uh, it is said that do not sleep under a tree at night time because plants and uh, human beings and all other organisms they all respire so uh, suffocation can happen and people can die because of suffocation because of oxygen deficient because oxygen gets deficient in the atmosphere because it's it is used by organisms and carbon dioxide um, gets in excess quantity in atmosphere now the second use of glucose is that glucose convert is converted into other forms of carbohydrate like sucrose which is a disaccharide uh, made up of glucose and fructose when glucose and fructose these are both monosaccharides when they both combine together they form sucrose which is a um, which is a disaccharide and also starch can be formed from uh, glucose starch is basically a polysaccharide it is made up of a long chain of glucose molecules so what happens when plants in, when in plants excess glucose is formed so that excess glucose stores temporarily in the form of a starch and um, at night time that starch is utilized uh, or that starch again converts back into glucose and provides energy so glucose formed during photosynthesis is converted into sucrose and um, or it can it can be converted into starch 
Now let's discuss first about sucrose and how is sucrose stored. So like we're going to take an example of a sugarcane plant and as you all know that uh, um, we obtain sucrose. Uh, sucrose is basically a table sugar which we add in our tea. It's sugar basically. So sugar is basically obtained from beetroot and sugarcane plants. So in these plants, um, glucose is stored in the form of a sucrose. So, and also sucrose can be stored in some underground uh, or uh, storage organs like tubers, stem tuber. Potato is a stem tuber basically. So in potatoes, um, and also beetroot, uh, beetroot, uh, potato in these underground storage organs. They in these uh, all fruits and vegetables. Uh, mostly vegetables are underground storage organs. So, um. So glucose is stored in the form of uh, sucrose, right? Now starch, as you know that like potato contains starch. So when glucose is excess, it is, it is stored in the form of starch. Starch is basically, it is made up of a long chain of glucose molecules. When plants produces glucose in excess quantity as a result of photosynthesis, so what happens, they are stored in the form of uh, of a, a polysaccharide known as starch. So the glucose which is made in the leaves by means of photosynthesis as you know that leaves are food factory, uh, food is prepared, glucose is formed. So some of the glucose is used for um, by means by these shoots and young leaves they use these glucose. Some is transported to roots because roots cannot photosynthesize they need food so some of the glucose is transported to the root, some to the stem, some to these uh, growing leaves and uh, flowers as well, right? And some glucose is converted into glucose 1-phosphate. An enzyme called phosphorylase joins these molecules to produce starch. So glucose converted into glucose 1-phosphate and then there is an enzyme called phosphorylase which join these all glucose 1-phosphate and forms starch. So Glucose is stored in the form of starch in potato tubers, right? In the storage organs, right? Or um, they are stored in the form of sucrose in sugarcane and beetroot. Glucose is also used to form amino acids and proteins, like if you see the composition of glucose and protein, so glucose is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and uh, protein are made up of amino acids, and amino acids in turn are made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen. So um, glucose is also used from amino acids and protein. Plant has to obtain um, nit nitrates um, from the soil, um, like uh, there are minerals in the soil, so plants has to obtain um, nitrates from the soil in order to manufacture protein. Uh, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen comes from glucose, but uh, nitrogen can come in the form of nitrates from the soil, from the minerals. The glucose in the leaf can react with nitrates brought to the leaf to form amino acids. As you know that plants absorb water and not only water from the soil, but minerals also get dissolved. So that uh, water and minerals from the roots goes into the stem and then finally reaches to the leaf by means of salum. So once it reaches the leaf, so what happened? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, which is formed as a result of photosynthesis, combines with these nitrates and forms protein. The amino acids are combined to form protein, which are converted into new protoplasm within the cells. Now, protein is used for the growth of the plant. It is used to form new protoplasm within the cells. Excess amino acids are carried to all parts of the plant, especially to the growing regions of the plant. Here, amino acids are used to build new protoplasm or stored as protein. So, plant need uh, proteins to grow, to form new protoplasm, and for protein formation, um, besides glucose, nitrates are required which are obtained from the soil in the form of minerals. Now you see here, this is a pulse crop, right? And it has root nodules. 
Now these root nodules have nitrogen fixing bacteria in it. So nitrogen in the atmosphere is used as for plants. Plant cannot absorb it. So what happens that this nitrogen in the atmosphere is fixed by these uh, microorganism by these bacteria present in root nodules and um, they are fixed in the form of nitrates and nitrate nitrites plant absorb those um, uh, these nitrates and forms uh, uh, protein glucose is used to make starch glucose is used to make sucrose glucose is used to make uh, protein glucose is also used to form fats and if you see the composition of fats, so fats is made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Uh, carbohydrates are also made up of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. The only difference between fats and carbohydrates is that, that in carbohydrates, hydrogen, oxygen ratio is 2 ratio 1. Whereas in fats, the composition of hydrogen, oxygen is like 16 ratio 1. So hydrogen is far in greater quantity as compared to oxygen in fats. Fats has less oxygen and more hydrogen atoms. Fats are also formed from glucose in the leaves. Some of the sugar that reach the storage organs may also be converted into the fats for storage. Fats may also be used in cellular respiration or for forming new protoplasm, for example, the cell surface membrane. As you know that plants uh, are in other organisms as well, you know, cell wall, there, is, there is a cell wall. Uh, in plants and then next to the cell wall is cell membrane and cell membrane is made up of protein and lipids. So plants need to make uh, lipids, plants need to make fats, right? Because their cell membrane and cell membrane will be formed from uh, lipids and protein. So uh, what happens is that glucose formed in the leaves is um, when it uh, when it reaches to the storage organs it can be stored in the form of fats as well and that fats and lipids are used by plants to make new uh, cell membrane and also you know when the uh, fats can also be used in cellular respiration right so as a substrate it can be used in cellular respiration as well triglycerides in plants Plants store their energy in triglycerides with low melting points which are liquid at room temperature. These triglycerides are referred to as oils, results from reaction between glycerol and unsaturated fatty acid that is oleic acid. So uh, you know that we obtain a lot of oils from the plants like castor oil, olive oil, canola oil, sunflower seed oil. So there are so many oils extracted from plants. Plants are a source of triglycerides. And uh, the fats which are obtained from the plants are basically unsaturated. They're good for health and they're useful in cooking. And uh, um, they are liquid at room temperature and they have low melting point. So it's always advisable to, uh, to use unsaturated fats. That is uh, fats obtained from the plants, uh, which we in normal English we call it oil. Because, it's, uh, um, because oil is uh, liquid at room temperature and uh, it's good for health. It doesn't cause obesity or heart problems. Okay, so plants uses of glucose. Um, so we, we will have a summary of uh, glucose that what is glucose used in plants. Or how plant uses glucose right so glucose can be used immediately to provide energy so it's an energy source right and um, it's a raw material for growth repair and replacement of damaged parts um, it is used to make fats and oil and they are stored in seeds right and also in fruits if it is stored in fruits like glucose is stored in fruits, so it will be in the form of sucrose and um, if it is stored in leaves, seeds, roots, and tubers, then definitely it would be in the form of a starch. And also, glucose is used to make cellulose, which is the main, uh, which is the main structural material of um, cell wall. Um, energy used to turn sugar, nitrates, and other nutrients into amino acids, which builds up protein. So glucose is used to make protein, glucose is used to provide energy, glucose is used for uh, growth as well 
it is it is it is used to make fats and oil it is used to make sucrose which is stored in fruits and it's also um a store it is also stored in the form of the starch so again this is all uh, the uh, along with the picture it's all description is there that uh, um glucose which is made by photosynthesis is uh, it is stored in the roots and um, in the storage organs in the form of a starch it is used to make a cell wall um by taking a form of a cellulose and it is also used to make fats and oils and uh, amino acids and proteins are also made from it and glucose is also used in the as a substrate in respiration storage food is digested and utilized protein fats and starch are derived from the glucose formed in leaves and ex any excess is stored as insoluble products in the storage organs when these are needed the cells in the storage organs produces enzymes to digest the stored food into soluble substances that can be absorbed by the plants so uh, excess glucose is stored in the form of uh, uh, insoluble products and whenever plant needs energy so they are converted back into soluble substances by the action of enzymes and plants absorb it so it is just like in humans when we have excess glucose it is stored in the form of glycogen and also we have glucose stored in the form of fats right and whenever we need energy so those fats and those glycogen provides back us back uh, uh, energy okay so like uh, how does it provides us energy like starch which is stored in the potato tubers it is by by the action of enzyme called as diastase it is converted into maltose and then maltose is converted into glucose by maltase enzyme right and uh, glucose may be changed to sucrose and transported away like you know in photosynthesis glucose converts in the form of sucrose and is transported to all parts of the uh, plant by means of phloem proteins are digested to polypeptides and amino acids by pepsin and repsin respectively and fats you know when whenever plants need energy uh, and fats has to be digested so it digests in the form of uh, fatty acid it digests to give the product like fatty acids and glycerol and fatty acids and glycerol combine to get to make fats the digested food is carried to all parts of the plant especially the growing regions the stem and the root tips or a leaf okay so that's it i hope you have uh, you have gained lots of information from this uh, video um i hope it was useful don't forget to uh, like comment and subscribe my youtube channel um till then take care